Hello and welcome to the Annotation Series. I'm your host Samuel Wood and I'm joined by Kyle Pikett like normal. Hello! If it's anyone different then please be concerned. And today yes. we're going to be talking about the video game side of adapt adaptation. Which I think is an interesting subject honestly because there's so many ways the medium has been done that it's quite incredible, don't you agree? I, I completely agree with Samuel Wood. Okay, so what normally happens is like any piece of media, a video game can be adapted from a uh, novelization. Um, there are a few examples of this that we're going to be talking about, but primarily we're going to be talking about, um, well, Kyle specifically, I haven't got much, um, interest in this franchise to complete, but The Witcher. Yes, The Witcher series. So, um, did you play the, um, games first, or did you read the books first, Kyle? I, um, I played The Witcher 3, which had quite a few references to, um, the books, especially the, uh, first one, The Last Wish. Right. Um, such as, because there was a mission named The Last, um, The Last Wish. Which was, um, which is a whole mission dedicated to the history of Yennefer and Geralt, and how they first came to be in the first place. Which, um, which was in the first book. We mean that it's with the adaptation side. I think it's more like a continuation of the book series. Oh, but it, I, I thought, the, but didn't the books come f before it? The so. books came before it. Yes. Yeah. But I, but I, put, but I think that the um, the games more or less continued that story. Oh, so you're saying there was a lot built up through the books, yeah. and then some of it is adapted afterwards, basically. Yeah. Well, that's quite interesting. Did the downloadable content um, DLC that we're going to be referring to it? Did that add any sections from the book out of curiosity? Um, they added they added some um cr they added some characters from the book and older games such as uh, Shani in the first DLC. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Hearts of Stone. Right. Um. Oh, I think, I think Reggie was in the book, like from Blood and Wine. Basically, a higher vampire. Sounds like a Game of Thrones style, doesn't it? To be fair, to be fair, The Witcher 3 is very Game of thrones -y. Yeah, well... So it, it takes a lot of notes from it. Well, the Game of Thrones take a lot of notes from... <laughs> oh, that's a... That's... Mm. Interesting question. That's an interesting right. question. But that, that, that's not for the time. But, um, overall, do you think, um, The Witcher series... Over, do you think it's a good adaptation of the novelization? Yeah. And do you think, um, vice versa, when it's flipped, do you think the Witcher books adapt the game better? Or have you not read those novelizations yet? Um, I haven't read the no no uh, I haven't read the novelizations that are set after the you know. Because the, the um, has. well, because the game is very highly rated. Yeah. So I can imagine there's a peak interest in the books now because they're all over the Amazon recommendations. I now. think um, there's actually some comics behind it. No, there probably is a graphic novel for everything. Yeah, <laughs> there is. So there's one. Right, but um, similarly, there's another franchise I'm going to be um, talking about when it comes to this, because um, as we know, video games they can be adapted adapted from whatever just ideas, because that was the primarily one. But um, you know when. Other characters like you know how Link was based on Peter Pan and bits and bobs like that. Mm. But um, there's one franchise I want to talk about because it's um, it gained a lot of popularity and then just somewhat kind of died down. But the way it's been adapted, I find is very interesting, and I'm going to be talking about Assassin's Creed. Ah uh, yes. So uh, the early, the early so show. how did you get into Assassin's Creed? Out of curiosity. Oh, okay, let's see. Um, my dad, my dad. I think it was. I think it was around 2012, like 2012 um, Christmas, my dad got me Assassin's Creed 3. Oh, you thought so. And from, and from then, you know, I just continued playing the Assassin's Creed games. And Batwood, because I got Revelations next, then Brotherhood. And then two. And then, and then one. Black. Yes. Oh, well, so oh, oh, that's weird, because I had the correct order, because I was playing <laughs> But no, what people. But what I find interesting about Assassin's Creed as well is it's also adopting a time period, these games. Because for those who don't know, you're a guy, you go into a machine, you relive your life as an assassin, bibbly bubbly doo. You know. But wait, I think historically, and all the figures that you kill, it's very accurate and really realistic <laughs> until you go to the electronic boo-boo-loo bits and bobs. Yes. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, I. Overall, I think historically, some of them could be very accurate. There's a lot of um, real pirates that are actually in Assassin's Creed 4. Yeah. So, well, Blackbeard's the obvious one. But, oh, yeah, um, obvious. Yeah. What do you mean? That, that's the main one I'm going to go on because we'll be here all day if I start getting into my swashbuckling and moving. Arr! Right. Blackbeard died. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Right, so. <laughs> no. But no, alright. 
And, you know, some of them take place in, like, you know, the French Revolution and stuff mm. and Victorian London, which is still the only reason why I played Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Yeah. So, overall, you like I, I, I do think they adapted history well, mm. but adapt adaptations of the game have been rough, if you ask me. Because, have you read, yeah. have you, um, read in any of the novels by any chance? I've read, I think, uh, I've read a few. I've read the uh, second one and I've read Black Flag. Black Flag was the first one I read. Yeah, um, how do you think they um, compare to the games? Do you think they're faithful adaptations? Um, yeah, they, had a, they, had, they do add a few stories here and there that you don't see in the game. Ah, so they expand upon it like yeah. uh, any good novel. Does. Black, uh, Black Flag actually, wait, it was, it's Edward Kenway, right? She was the yeah. main. Um, in the Black Flag book it explored um, Edward's past. It doesn't have a big chunk of before the beginning of the game as well. Yeah, like a large chunk dedicated to building Edward up. And then at the end of the book... I think the twist is, he had a metal arm and he was trying to... <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the book, um, he, go, he travels back to Wales. And oh, I think he yeah, he starts killing some of the people that wronged him in the past. Do you think these books don't surpass like, the enjoyment you get from playing the games? No. Yeah. And no. <laughs> but yeah, so overall, would you call them good ad- adaptations? I, I would call them good adaptations. I actually do really have... Really interesting stories. Right, are you ready for a de- are you ready for a decent adaptation but a bad movie? Which one? Assassin's Creed, the movie. Oh god, I forgot about that. Well, I like, lost my dad and it was horrible. For those who don't know, um, sometimes we get terrible <laughs> movies based on um, video games, yeah, and you'd them. think sometimes you think they'd end in um, glory, but unfortunately, the majority of the time and um, online especially. They are received very poorly. Doom the movie. And there's a new Hit one coming Ma- out. Can we not? <laughs> Hit- Hitman got a movie. Oh, yeah. The Mario yes. Bros. movie is a masterpiece. <laughs> the new Sonic movie yeah. is coming out. <laughs> but um, no. But most of these are really seriously weirdly received. They are just unbelievable. So it's only gaming ones that are actually you know well received. <laughs> and I count Wreck It Ralph. No, I don't count. No, I don't count. No, cheating. Um, but the Assassin's Creed movie, it's one of those, it has enough of the elements of the games to look like it, and I guess it is kind of a loyal one. Yeah, but when it keeps cutting back to Desmond yes. doing a fight scene, like honestly, what the, like, it's <sighs> so poorly choppily edited together, and it adds nothing to the franchise. So, I'd, I'd say it's more of an inspiration, and I know most people don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> but it is a highly popular franchise. Only about three or four people didn't know about it from the primary research that we did on it. Wow. So, yeah, it was really popular. Well, let's not forget Slender Man. Oh, the movie. Yeah, that one came out last year. That was garbage. <laughs> that was just pure garbage. Um. So do you think that? So overall, do you think Assassin's Creed has been adapted well and faithfully? When it comes to the box, I think the stories are adapted quick, but it's so rushed. Yeah, I, and I, I think it's very rushed. interesting as well. I think some of the um, in in continuity, you know, the inwards part, you know, like the side games, they build world, the world poorly. The amount of time, you know, like the Chronicles ones and stuff, yeah. like they convolute themselves so much, it is garbage. <laughs> Like, you know, in the first game, they're like, oh, the, it was built these many years ago, and then Origins go, no, it was built here, but then the China games go, no, it was built here, and then all these, like... Yeah, make it in Japan, please. You just want a samurai yeah. game. Yeah, come on, a jet ja- right. Anyway, right. Assassination originated in Japan, didn't it? Yeah. Right. So. We're gonna... Okay, right. Now we're gonna talk about, um, a little thing called license games. Ooh, the boy. infamous one. But we're gonna start off with a positive one, because, again, like, um... Movies based on games, they're not, on the internet, they're not exactly the most well received. But first we're going to be talking about an adaptation of a comic book and a TV show. Well, more the TV show, if you ask me, but the style of the comic book, that being Telltale's The Walking Dead, released in 2012. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a fantastic game, honestly. If I'm going to say my opinion right now, I think it's the only Telltale, one of the only Telltale games that actually has weight to it, along with the Wolf of Wolf That's a great game as well. Right. But, um... Yeah, what do you think of The Walking Dead as a whole? Do you think it's an, ad- an adaption well? That's kind of hard to say, but when we're going by like, the style, I think... By the style? Yes. 
I think it's very faithful because it does just like the, look like the comic if it had colour. Yeah. Sometimes they used to play in like black and white. Oh, that was yeah, it was really cool. Wait, you could play that in black and white, really? I just, I just pretty much just set my brightness and contrast to zero. Ah, oh, right. I thought that was cool too. It was yeah. really cool. But yeah, I think because it, it has some characters from the TV show in there. I know no, they pop up. I know no, Glenn, Glenn is most famous in the first season. We've got Herschel. Yeah. Who is exactly how he is in the comics, believe it or not? Would you say he's more TV show or comic? He's more. Yeah, it's more. It's more comic. Yeah, that's what Definitely I thought. Comic. Because it is based on it is based more on the comics than it is a TV show. I, I think a lot of the set pieces as well are more, you know, inspired by the tone of The Walking Dead. If you make sense, mm. like there's a lot of things that you're watching the show and then you're playing the game and you go, oh yeah, I can see a connection there. Yeah, like you could totally see because I'm betting you, because hasn't the um, TV show taken elements from the games as well? Because um, I think no. Because I kind of think you know um to the second half right. This is more of a my opinion, but I, but I kind of think um, Carl's relationship got put pushed more on Rick because of uh, Clementine and Lee. Mm. That's like uh, that's not confirmed, but I do think that's a little thing that happened personally because that relationship is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sends me back to Mormon for this. Oh, dear, I spoiled that. Was, that was oh, ash. God, right. Um. Have you got anything to add to The Walking Dead when it came, comes to that? Other well, than it's episodic, so you could say it's like five chapters. Yeah, yeah like like five chapters of like, hell, maybe even five volumes. Yeah. Yeah, because it's very... Because it does feel like, because like, even the acts as well, they feel like comic book issues yeah, as well. So, so I think it adopts the aesthetic really well. I would call it a great looking adaptation as well. <laughs> and... The music is just depressing. <laughs> Overall, would you say, like, out of the comics, which one do you think adapts it better, the TV show or the game? The game. The game. The game well, massively. <laughs> the game just blows out the water, really. Yeah, it is. You should definitely just go play it. It is great. And Black Flag. Now we're going to be talking about um, other licensing games. Still on the gra graphic novel spectrum, two, re two um, superheroes came off and uh, Revolution... I wouldn't say revolutionised, but heavily improved the licensing era because what you need to understand is um, movie tie-in games actually um, crashed the video game industry for a long time. Oh, really? Yeah, um, in 1982, um, E.T. for the Atari 2600 came oh, out. Oh, yeah, yep, I which, remember that. Which sales were so poor on, it actually cr crashed the video game industry, which I think was a bit harsh, blaming it all on E.T. It's just because no one read the instruction manual, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so E.T. is actually an impressive game for the Atari 2600, it's just bashed that much, it's not fair. But yeah, it crashed the video game industry because no one knew what they were doing and it was getting refunded so much there were even rumours that Atari had to bury them all in a, in a lanyard. Yeah, I think there was a documentary of that. Like, There's a whole documentary ago. on it, it's really yeah. good. I think, and, my, um, I think my mum actually put it on yeah. at one point. And um, side plug, um, the Angry Video Game Nerd uh, movie is actually um, based on the conspiracy of it. Before devolving wow. into weird AVGN rubbish like normal, <laughs> but no. Overall, as well as an adaptation, I think ET, despite it being a bunch of blocks, <laughs> it, it's actually decent for the technology. It's not like good by any standards like to these days, but yeah, it's not. I mean, it's like. better than the most Spider-Man Two. I mean, oh god. Well, yeah. They, yeah, but what they tend to do, what normal movie time games tend to do, because I'm betting you grew up with a ton of them, is they add like new scenarios, but then they don't like correlate them into the main plot enough and then it just feels like a janky mess. It's like one of those, you've got to watch the movie to understand what's going on. You know, stuff like The Incredibles for the PS2. The Amazing Spider-Man game. The Amazing Spider-Man. To be fair, they, no, to be fair, The Amazing Spider-Man series is set after. Yeah, I know that. But I think they've got an excuse there. Actually, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, I'm pretty sure that, that's set down in the story. No, it's not. It's set after. I'm pretty sure it's afterwards. It's got to be after. When else could it be? Because Electro died in the Amazing Spider-Man 2, remember? Oh, yeah. But then he's in the game. So, yeah. it's set down at the same time. And you see Max as a human in the game. So, it is set around the same time. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't play this game. <laughs> uh, anyway, but, um... As well as Superman 64, that's another infamous terrible oh boy. license game. That is a poor adaptation by all stands. It looks like Superman, but it's so blocky, you might as well be playing as a cardboard box with a Superman logo painted on it. But you know, you can get some terrible movie license game. What else have I got listed there? Ah, I've got too many notes. Ah. He's looking at the Arkham ones. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, he's kind of for Yakum games. I think I uh, before we go on to anyway. But most, I would say, would you say the majority of licensed games are trash, though? Yes. Yeah, so would I. Yeah, it, <sighs> there is so much shovelware out there; it's unbelievable. Uh, I mean, There's a Duck Dynasty game. Yeah, we have Lego Star Wars. So. Yeah, but yeah, but <laughs> the Lego games are just great adaptations anyway. Mm. It's just every it's just every part of a main story, like Indiana Jones and stuff like that. Just Lego. Yeah, Lego, and funny and charming. Most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah, Once all they start talking, but that's an unpopular opinion, I guess. I can't like it. Yeah, I, I thought it when they didn't talk of. Although I am, I do like it when it is, you know, you know, its own story. When yeah. it's actually taken from the films. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel kind of lazy. Yeah, the Lego the Lego license games are just fantastic, though, when it comes to uh, adaptation-wise. Because even the ones that I don't like, they are so faithful. It is unbelievable. What else? Have you got anything else to add to that, to the bad license games? Any ones you want to mention? Okay, let's see. Uh, we have four. Oh, the Sega Xbox 360 one. Ah, uh, yeah, that one. Oh, God. Um, what about Green Lantern? Was that bad? Yeah. That wasn't really bad. Yeah, it was... It was did you play 4? Mm. Well, guess what? Because it was the same though. game. It was the same game. Uh, Star Wars Force Unleashed. That was a great game. Oh. Uh, Shadow of Mordor. It was a great game as well. Yeah. But, um... Anyway, I think we should start talking positive about these, if now. That was um, one too. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so what you want, but Battlefront 2 is actually a great adaptation. I mean, until you get Ray and Darth Vader in the same room together. Yeah, and then you just get a bit confused with the continuity. <laughs> yeah, even though Disney all only wants canon. Anyway, um, so um, graphic novel-wise, I'm going to say um, the Arkham series is a great adaptation. Oh, bloody hell it is. Because it's basically the animated series. But as a game. But as a game. Even returning voice actors come back for it. All the styles are either updated or modernised, or sometimes even left alone completely. Mainly Batman and the Joker look very similar to the season four counterparts, while the Joker more Justice League. But hmm. yeah. voice acting is perfect. These, the stories are great and they fit the tone completely. They're just great games. I don't, I don't care what Arkham game it is. I will always call it a great game, even the ones that re aren't received that positively. I love Arkham that much, and even that's been adapted into its own comic book series and universe. Yeah, and guess what? Half of them are actually pretty good. The Arkham City prequel novel is a uh, not novel, a um, graphic novel. That's um, pretty good and helps explain uh, some events in between, like how Joker took his territory. Mm. Uh, how some of the gangs are separated, how Bane became a powerhouse and was trying to track down the Titan and bits and bobs like that. And the artwork in them are gorgeous. It is Paul Dini right now, after all and all. So oh, it's Paul Dini. Yeah, Paul Dini came out. He's not for all of them, because I know Arkham Unhinged is a bit iffy. Yeah, it is very iffy. It ruins a lot of... Um, it creates massive plows. Like, yeah. it, it creates massive ones. Right, you know what my favourite plot hole in the Arkham series is, though? Go on. It was, um... There's a graphic novel... Um, not a, there's a graphic novel explaining how um, I think it's called like Prelude to Arkham Knight or something daft like that. Yeah. But um, it was basically a side plot where the Joker had set up a bomb to kill everyone. Mm. Right. But the bomb blew the Batmobile up, and that's why it broke. But if you read the Batman Arkham um, novel, what one of the prequel novels about how the Riddler became into power, he's the one who destroys the Batmobile. <laughs> And, like, the mobile games, some of them are set, like, ten years before Arkham Asylum, but that can't be possible, because Batman Arkham Origins takes place seven years before Arkham Asylum, and in the mobile game, they've got mo they've got all the modern gear. But, but um, so... Yeah, it's, uh... Vid adapting video games can be hard, to be fair. Hmm. But it doesn't matter. Every Arkham game, I will love in some way, and mainly because I'm the b most biased Batman fan in the world. Yeah, but yes. I can find enjoyment <laughs> out of Justice League and Batman v Superman. All right. Oh my god. Okay, right. Here's one that I've got as a overall. Arkham is a great. One we agree is a great adaptation yes. of the Dark Knight. Yes, not just it is. not just of the comic books, but of the animated series and Batman as a concept. I think. Along with the animated series, if you just wanted someone to say, what is Batman, I think you could show them the Arkham series and you would get it. I highly agree. I highly agree with that. Also, the Riddler is fantastic with his voice actor. Oh, he looks like David Tennant. <laughs> he should be David Tennant. I, I still think Robin Williams would have been good as a... I think, yeah. Because he wasn't considered for forever, but... 
we, 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 we know who got it. Anyway, right, let's move on before I go into a bit of a panic rage. <laughs> Alright, um, last great one we're going to talk about is Speederman for oh, PS4. Oh, Spider-Man. As an adaptation, I'm really mixed on it. Because it reinvents a lot, and I like that it does that. But I think it focuses in some weird areas. Mr. Negative. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Negative. Uh, I, I think MJ's character is completely misplaced. I think I think Spider-Man's character is perfect. perfect. Yeah, he's adapted perfectly. I think Yuri in the police department adapted perfectly, and the neighborhood in the city perfectly. What about his villains? Do you think they were adapted? Great? I think Doctor Octopus was. Yeah, but I'd say that's more reinvented. Yeah. But yeah, I really like the new Doc Ock, but that's more of a reinvention, and a reinvention of Miles. I think this new Miles they've adapted, along with Spider-Verse, have been fantastic. <laughs> it's a bit whiny in PS4, but that's made up for Spider-Verse, alright? Yeah. Um, I think Electro's... Yeah. I think Electro's decent. Yeah, but I think it, the way it's they, more... I think the way they've, adap they've adapted Rhino's costume is really cool. Yeah. I do wish they, um... I do wish they adapted Vulture a bit more in the, ho in the Homecoming world. Yeah, but I think that would have been really cool. As a Spider-Man mythos, I would say it's adapted really well because it's got the tone, it's got the colours, it's got a terrible white suit that needs to burn. Right, it and adapts all the alternate costumes really well, even the ones that suck. And it, ad and it adapts Parker's life really cut down well. There's a mission where you literally have to track down your stuff because you've been kicked out of your apartment. <laughs> if, that, that, if that doesn't scream Spider-Man, I don't know what does. But yeah, overall, um, would you say... I would say... Sp there's the interesting thing, though. Spider-Man PS4, I think, is a decent um, adaptation, but I think it's a better, more reinvention, yeah. if anything. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think, honestly, if Stanley was still with us, he would be really proud of it. Well, he was around when it came out, wasn't he? Was it? Yeah, because it came out in September, he passed away in November. No, it was, it was October, wasn't it? Uh, don't mind, anyway. It was, uh, yeah. it was early November. Oh, all right. Alright, so that's it for the adaptations. There is on uh, video games. Um, thank you so much for watching, and thank until the next so time. Much. Thank you.